Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. Now this week, I'm going to be doing a review show on uh, a review show special on JB Magic, Mark Mason and JB Magic. Now Mark Mason, I have interviewed him on this channel before. If you have not seen that interview, you can check it out on the Talk Magic playlist. It has been one of the most popular videos that I ever uploaded onto this channel. Mark is an absolute legend. It really is. And he's one of the best demonstrators in the planet. And he always brings out amazing tricks every uh, every year he brings out like six or seven tricks that always light up the industry uh, well today I want to kind of take a deep dive into two brand new releases that have just come out by JB magic and Mark, Mark Mason uh, uh, which is a new coin gaff which is going to be very interesting to people that live in the UK uh, but also going to be interesting for people in general, but especially people that live in the UK. And then the Speed Loader Wallet, which a lot of people are raving about. We're going to be looking at the Speed Loader Wallet. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what I've done on this uh, on this review show special is I managed to get a chance to chat with Mark Mason. And uh, I, I chatted with him about the Speed Loader Wallet. He actually shows it on camera and talks about the pros and the cons. And then chatted to him about the new coin gimmick that he's got coming out as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that interview for you guys. So you can actually see that interview where I asked Mark about both of the products. And then when we've done that, we'll come back into the studio and I will review both products and perform them for you as well. So let's start off by having a look at the interview with Mark Mason. So I'm back here again with the legend, Mark Mason. How you doing, Mark? I'm all right. The legend is here. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, the, the man, the myth, the legend. You are, you are. I wish. You really are. You well, really are. About that. How are you, Greg? I'm good. I'm really good. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah, I'm sat in sunny Spain at the moment, so I'm living the Spanish dream. Mate, every time I speak to you, you're in a different hot country in America. <laughs> you're in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Talked about that, but I am in Spain at the moment. But all is good, you know, and working away, trying to find a miracle. And assuming everything goes according to plan, you're going to be back uh, back with us in the UK in Blackpool in February? Yeah, I'm booked, and obviously we're in this weird time we're in, but I'm booked and um, quite exciting, really, because I'm, I'm guessing the new convention centre will all be open by then, the new building and the new rooms and... I was I'm speaking, only guessing. I haven't been and had a look. But. Well, I was speaking to Russ Stevens just a couple of days ago, and he said that him and Russ Brown were going over to look at it because they've finalised it and they wanted to see it. So, yeah, as far as I'm aware, come next year, it's all going to be rejuvenated and it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah, so be, be different, right? And obviously, hopefully it'll all go really, really well. I still haven't done anything since Blackpool. Mm. Not the last one, the one before that. Um, I'm actually going to, not that this matters, but I'm going to America in September to do the Magi Fest for, yeah, but, for Vanishing but, Ink. Yeah. So that will be my first out in, you know, we've been, so let's see, let's see how, how that goes. I mean, hopefully it'll be great. Normally Magi Fest is good. Well, that's really cool. And I got to say, as every single time you bring something out, there is such a buzz in the community even before it hits the shelves, even before people see you dem it, uh, there's always a buzz. And there's two things that I know that you're bringing out around about now. Yeah. One that people are aware about because Murphy's have announced it. And one that probably nobody is aware about that is going to be exclusive just through you. And we're going to talk about both of those. Yeah, just uh, through me. And probably it'll make sense in a minute, just in the UK as well. Mm. Won't be America and Sweden and you know, because of what it actually is. But mm. yeah, I've been working hard on on that. You know, it was a, a little bit of work. We'll talk about it. But yeah, it's, it's come out really well. Well, well you've I'm, seen, you've, you've got one in I'm your hand. Got one. I'm going to do a review on it as soon as we finish this interview. And man, I'm excited. Oh, like excellent. as somebody who's a coin guy, as you know I am, this is one of the best things I've ever seen. Like, this is amazing. But we'll... Oh, that's really we'll, nice of you. It's true. We'll talk about it in a bit. But first of all, the cafe is blowing up. The Magic Cafe is blowing up. The Facebook groups are blowing up. Mark Mason is bringing out a wallet, the Speed Loader wallet. And it's created by uh, by uh, Tony Miller, right? Tony Miller, yeah. I've I've been working a little bit with him the last couple of years. We, I think he's a really smart guy and got some really good ideas. You remember No Choice Wallet? That was great. I loved that. I did that with him. And I just tweaked it and changed it a bit. And we came up with that. 
I saw the speed loader a while ago. It's it's not a brand new item. Uh, speed loader plus this is now because it, it's got extra routines. It's had a slight design tweak and and stuff, but um, and different leather and, and things. Uh, but when I saw the method from a guy who's who likes card to wallet, so when that is Tony, I went, why doesn't everybody know about this method? Uh, it's the only one. And I know I'm meant to say stuff and sell stuff that I actually always have and always use. No slides, no checkbook covers, no funny pockets on the back, no reset of any kind, and the card's really in the wallet. The other thing is, I quite often have jeans on. I can load it blind to my back pocket. I can load it front pocket jeans. Or if I'm really, really working, it's just the same as going in a jacket. Comes with about eight or nine routines, and it does more than just card to wallet. Can we can we have a look at one? Would that be okay? Can we? Yeah, you want to actually see one? I'd love to one see here. one. Yeah, yeah. I'd so love it. so it's a it's a it's black. It's all leather. It's not PU or polyurethane. It's really nice. Um, goes in any pocket. Right now, I've I've got just some credit cards in there, and yeah. I think I've got three or four fifty euro bills. I put the fifty in because they're very big, so you can see the depth is nice. I think that's important. I don't like all my money stuck out. Yeah. So usually, as you know, I don't have to tell you, you've got to get the card in there somehow. Is it okay to show the method? Yeah, as long as you're happy to. I mean, pretty much only magicians watch this anyway. So well, then uh, yeah. I, it's one of them, I think, when you see the method, you go, oh, my God, that's great. It's, it's really good. So one side of the leather folds down like this. What? All right. It doesn't crease. It's beautiful, honestly. This is like this in your pocket. So your jeans would be here. So you've got all this to hit, all that area there. Soon as that goes down, this flips back up and your card's now in the pocket inside the wallet. I can show it here, here. I can show, I flash it all the way around. I never even, I usually throw it down. But now the card is inside here. So now it comes out of here. Of course, I could have loaded it face down. I just, yeah. But I'm just trying to show you it is genuinely signed card inside. And there's no really? crease there, is there? No. Like, no. As soon as I put it back in my pocket, I do that again and I just reset it. So you effectively don't need a slide anymore. There's no. There isn't a slide. Not only isn't there a slide, you've got you've got all this to hit. If you can't hit this, you should be doing something else, right? You know, <laughs> that's it. It's done. I'm in. Completely inside. This is the bad end. I'm showing you the gimmick now. That's where the card is. But I flash it. I come to here. Card's inside the wallet, signed. I go straight back in and I just reset it. The cool thing is, you're a smart guy. You already have figured out. I could get a peek here. Mm. I could put something in and steal something out of here. So it's not just card to wallet. It does peaks. It does steals. Um, I think I always get this wrong. It might be nine. It's definitely eight. I think there's nine ideas and routines. There's one called Money Wrapper, where when you open it, if you look at the trailer, the girl's got a dollar bill with a paper clip on. That's my favorite. And it's inside, inside, inside. Jack Carpenter has got one with all rubber bands. It's the same wallet. It's on the same link. And when you take it out, you've got all rubber bands everywhere. There's no way, but but all the rubber bands, kind of when you do this, all flip to where they go and the card goes inside. I I think a lot of people don't know how cool it is. It's amazing. I've never That's seen it. that before. Never seen it before. Just goes here and then push down, up, and you're completely inside. You're not fumbling. You don't even have to look. You can just come from here, hit this here, and I'm just pushing it in now, and I'm straight out and I'm done. Wow. Tony's got a funny thing. I know it It doesn't make no sense, really. But people always say, can I use it as a real wallet? So to be funny, as Tony thinks he is, he's put $101 bills in it. It's this fat. And all credit cards, and then boom, he just loads the card in just to prove to you that you can just have it as your wallet. But There's that's a, that's a really important point, because I, I, I speak on this channel about wallets all the time, and one thing that people say is, 
I don't want a wallet that I can't use as my everyday wallet. I need to be able to put my money in there. I need to be able to put my uh, bills in there, my credit card. Put your money in your wallet, shouldn't you? You know, yeah, should look no more than that. I've only put three cards in, but they'll all double up. You can put six in. You know, there's space to double them all up. There's a, that bottom pocket is now doubled up. You know, I can double them all up and get six cards in, no problem. But all I've done is put three in just just so I could show you it's, you know, that's where it is. And what's nice um, about that, Mark, is at the moment, these days, so many people are obsessed with like tricks that will fit in a wallet, like Alakazam Pichinardi. He's got this whole wallet series, like yeah. this your wallet, this fits in your wallet. Um, having a wallet where there's lots of space. If you don't push it all the way down, then you don't, there's the card. Can you see? I'm flashing. Yeah. So you, you can come out and not show the card at first. If you push completely home, as I like to do, that's come. Now you will see the card in the wallet and before you before you draw it. So you, you can either push all the way or, or not push all the way. But uh, absolutely brilliant, really. It's, it's really terrific. It's such an easy thing to load and such an easy thing to carry and do. And it does fit in all pockets. And it's an instant reset. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it, reset. That's amazing. I just push down and I'm done. Straight into the and, pocket. And here's a question, because I know this is going to be asked. That that uh, that moment where you're doing that, if, you, if you're using this wallet a lot, is that going to eventually create a crease in the leather? I haven't got mine here, but I've had one about six or seven years. And of course, it all creases after a while. It's leather, but there isn't there isn't a big line here or anything. Nothing. It just comes back. That's it. That's all you're doing. But I I mean, there is going to be you are folding it there without a doubt. But there's a little bit of give here. It's not quite as simple as design as you think. Can you see that just giving here? Yeah, I can. Yeah. And that's what's taking the tension out of the crease. It's a great idea, it really is. The idea is Tony's, I just mass produce them. Tony sits in his basement hand sewing them. I mean, you can't, you know, that's why you've, no one's seen them. He'll make 50 for me once in a blue moon or 36 or, and people go, what's that? And I go, you've never seen this. Mm. And that's, and then I show them it and they go, why hasn't everyone got one of them? I say, because this guy sits in his basement. <laughs> Hand sewing them, all hand, all hand turned corners. I'm on the sewing side now. All hand turned, all of them. Hand turned, hand stitched. It's real nice. It's actually great value for money. It's sixty dollars, about That's fifty hard. quid. It's really good, especially like you said. I mean, we glossed over that, but I mean, the ability to steal a card from a wallet is absolutely. Really you know, there's so many routines where you, you can put something, they can literally see you put something in here and, and literally you're feeding it out of the back now. That's great. Or That's... something can go in your wallet. And I guess if you're here, you can get a glimpse now, can't you? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. If somebody put something in here that you couldn't see. That's it. I just looked. On the DVD, there's a twirl glimpse, it's called. You do this as you turn your wallet over and, and, and you're literally just doing and looking. <laughs> That's it, I just did it. I think it's called the twirl glimpse, if I remember rightly. And you've, you've distributed this through Murphy's. Have you done the tutorial for this or did Javier or somebody? Did, Javier did the um, uh, trailer for me. Yeah. You know Javier from Murphy's. A really good guy, Javier. Yeah, and then... There's a routine by Ed Oshman that's fantastic. He does that. And there's one by Jack Carpenter. And then there's some tips and ideas and loads from Tony. Tony shows you a great table load where it's not in your pocket. He just picks the wallet up and he's just putting it in. It's wow. really, that's good. So there's a few different ideas and different things on the tutorial. I think there's nine. And now I'm saying nine. I think nine is right. I think the original wow. speed loader just was a load. Um, watch out for money wrapper. Trust me, you'll be everyone will be doing money wrapper. That's they amazing. open this and they see money here, but when they pull the money out, there's a paper clip, and inside it all is their signed card. Wow. You can also, I never mentioned, there is none of this on the DVD, but you can Mercury fold it in as well. 
but there is none of that on the DVD, but it's just the same. Yeah. I don't know if that's an advantage or a disadvantage, but you can Mercury fold into there. That's very handy. Don't know if it's any better than just loading a card in. It is a palm. I've had 50 emails already this week. It is a palm. There's no point in saying it's not a palm. You've got to palm a card. But, you know, I do it on the off. They're, they're looking at other things. And I, and most people who are buying this type of prop can probably palm a card, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's great. That's Speed amazing. Loader Plus. $60. Absolutely brilliant. Think official releases around the 6th of September ish, Craig. Okay, which is the Monday. Yeah, because... every shop. Okay. You're going to have to come through me. I'm more than happy for you. But, but, Enjoy but yourselves by it anywhere you want to buy it. It's available through all dealers because it's obviously out through Murphy's, but you can get it from JB Magic and JB Magic USA, right? So you yeah, can. And UK. Because people UK who and don't USA. know this, Mark, you ship from the UK and you also ship from America. So if you're in America and you buy something from Mark, it's not yeah. like it's coming over from the UK. And likewise, if you're in Europe, it's not coming over from America. But it, Correct. Yeah. And I thought as Brexit got nearer and nearer, my English customers, I'll be honest, would get less and less. So I have a, a guy in uh, near Blackpool, actually, and he, he ships for me. And, and on my website, it usually says on the English site, on each product at the top, it says, this item ships from the UK. This I, So, for instance, like some Morgan Dollar stuff doesn't. I can only put it together in America. Mm. But, you know, Alibi, Speed Loader... Uh, Killer in Manila, it says across the top, this item ships from the UK. Got it. Brilliant. Now, talking about the UK, mm. teased at the beginning of the interview, another product that you've got coming out. Um, and this is now available to buy. It's not going to come with a tutorial. It's a utility device. And I can't believe, as somebody who's a coin worker and has produced gaffed coins before, I can't believe that you've been able to pull this off because I remember many, many years ago, like before, like I must be going back about 15 years now. I remember going up to Bob Swaddling when he was at Blackpool and he had his booth in the, in the normal area. And I remember saying to him, Bob, do you think you can make one of these? And he turned around to me and he said, not a chance. It's impossible to make one of these. And then you turned around to me and said, actually, I figured it out. Well, wow. As you know, I've lived in America the last 14 years or whatever in Florida. Bob only lives 30 minutes from me. Me and Bob are, I like to think, more than just friends. You know, we're, we're super close. He's really good with me and he's taught me a lot. And I, I went to work with him and I've been stood next to him week in and week out for about 10 years now. And he taught me how to expand coins. And I've literally expanded... I know everyone says hundreds, but I have expanded hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of the things with Bob's guidance. And he'd say, this is wrong. That's wrong. This is what we should be doing. And Bob usually would make them into shells while I'm bringing them to the right size. And expanding is quite a tricky procedure. It's not quite as easy as you think. When I came over to Spain, um, I started to think about if I could expand a 50 pence piece. And I have asked people, and I have done as much research as I can, and I'm not saying, Craig, there's never been one ever in the history of, I've never seen one. I you just told me what Bob told you. I've asked everybody I know if they've seen one. One person told me there was one with a fake rim. I don't know how quite that would work. Like a, an extra rim, but I can't, I've never seen it, so I can't answer the question. The issue is, I know this sounds blatantly obvious, a 50 pence piece is hexagonal. It's got seven sides. So when I started to try and expand a 50 pence piece, this is an expanded shell. I know it's a bit hard to see in my little office. If anything gets bigger than anywhere else, that's a problem. And I was going to mill an hexagonal shape in the back. So mm -hmm. the back would look like that. Yeah. Then I realized that that would mean lining something up every time. Does that make sense, Craig? Yeah. You would have a shell with seven sides underneath. And for a split second, you would have to try and line you it up. Around, yeah. 
So I thought it would be better if it could have a circle on the back. That's where the problem is. If it has a circle on the back, like a half dollar shell or a two pound shell, or a, and any of these points are bigger, your machine can only machine where it machines. Mm. It will then be offset and, and not very good and wouldn't work. So I've, after about three months of messing around and throwing a few quid in the bin, <laughs> literally throwing a few <laughs> quid in the bin, I, I figured it out. And, and this is genuinely an expanded 50 pence piece with a circular, circular back. Now, this is the first one we did. It now has a recess and a shim. Yes, the one I've got has got a recess and a shim, but you haven't stuck the shim in, have you? No. Because some people, some people don't, don't like it, do they? Some people don't want it to do that. I think that's um, really smart. Before, before somebody emails and says, but all 50 pence pieces stick to a magnet, no, they don't. <laughs> they don't all stick to a magnet. Here's a big, this doesn't stick to a magnet. No. So certain ones don't, but I have to have that for the expansion. Otherwise, I can't, I can't do the job. So they don't all stick to a magnet at all. So what we've got is a, a, a expanded 50 pence going over the top. Can, I can't quite see, Craig. Can you see? Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Straight over the top with over 90% coverage. There, there's the... I'm trying to tilt it up so you can see the bad angle. That is incredible. I'm tilting it so you can see, because normally it'd look like that, and now you can't see anything. I'm trying to show you the that's what I've got for coverage, completely inside. This is what it looks like on the back. I know it's a bit weird on the back, because you'll let me turn it so you can see, because you're looking at that on the back. Mm. It'll spin still, just like any, you know, it'll still spin. But now we can do coins across, coins through table, that cool oh matrix you do. Mm. Uh, you, you can you can do my shell shock to I have put any root. I might do some routines if people want to see them, or I might get you to put throw one in or more than happy to. Um, but most people who do shell work again kind of know that that's exactly what it is. But if you if you look at this side, and I know we're getting really picky now, it's I mean it is centered absolutely bob on. So I know that I've got great coverage and I don't have to line anything up. That's it over the top done. You know, I just come straight from here to here, and that's it. It's done, isn't it? That's great. As a coin worker, I'm gonna tell you why that that is so important for a UK coin magician. 10 peas are too small and fiddly. They too just small. To do most routines that require delicate manipulation, 10 peas are too small, too fiddly. The best coins to use, you want something a little bit bigger. So the best coin is a two pound coin. But right. the problem is hardly anybody carries around two pound coins with them. So you might be able to borrow one of them, but there's no way you're going to be able to borrow four of them. Do you know what else is weird? with two pound coins. And don't get me wrong, I sell some two pounds coin stuff. In certain lights, that gold, it's it's almost not there, you know? Yeah. In a, in a darkish room or whatever, I go, look, I'll show you this with these two pounds. And they're looking almost like, it's, it's much better to have a, a shiny 50p, isn't it? Everyone's got 50p's with them. Everybody has. You can always blag a 50, can't you? Yeah, easy. Yeah, and they've all got the shield on the back. You're not trying to marry up. You're not thinking, oh, I've got to marry this up. It isn't going to fit. It doesn't look good. Unfortunately, it probably won't be a worldwide release. I mean, of course, if you want one in China, you can have one, but it's probably just for the UK. It's very sensibly priced, you know, for the work. About 30 quid. That's ridiculously cheap, mate. That's really good. Yeah. But for a true expanded shell that fits True over. expanded. That's exactly what it is. It's going to be around 30 quid. Um, I'm about a week away from release, maybe 10 days. They're, they're just being all finished. They're just being recessed for the shim. They're all expanded. And, and are they going to be sent over to the UK and they're going to ship from the UK? Yeah, they're already there. Oh, brilliant. 
they're already there. They sell ownership from the UK, so there'll be no import taxes, no duties. As I said, I can't imagine anyone in Sweden wanting one, but you never know. There might be an English guy, or I get the odd guy who says I collect coins from around the world, or but pretty much it's a UK, it's a UK thing. It's a beautiful fit. It looks great. Did you actually they, look at the one I sent oh, you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're a brilliant and they palm so well 50p palm so well because palm's the, great doesn't it yeah well, it does if you're craig well. petty it's not so good if you're me but if, <laughs> if you're talented and stuff yeah <laughs> yeah but but goes in real nice doesn't it mm. goes in great so i know it doesn't sound much you go i've got an expanded 50p but it's quite a tricky object to make um really really pleased with how it came out it came out great as i already mentioned Bob gave me the knowledge of how to expand and, and all I've done is run with that a little bit and try and do something that not everyone's got. Craig, if, if you knew how many people at Blackpool over the years or, you know, Bristol Day of Magic or London's... Day, have you got any expanded 50Ps? I go, there isn't an expanded 50P. I put one... Um, I haven't got it here. I wish I had now. I've got, an, I've got a flipper 50 and I've always had that. That ain't new. I've got a okay. flipper 50, but it fits in the shell like a Rolls Royce. <laughs> oh, lovely. So you've got that lovely 3 2 1 moment, you know. So I don't have to tell you about flippers. You know more about flippers than I'll ever know. But, um, <laughs> um, That's great. But, so it fits in because it's true expanded. And a flipper's a flipper. It's not expanded. So it fits over lovely. Definitely. So I'm really, really pleased with, with that. Um, more than I can kind of even say, because I didn't think I could do it. The first 50, 60, 70, all were junk. All of them junk. I didn't work at all. You should be really proud of yourself because having seen the quality, and I'm going to bring this back to the studio in a minute, and I'll talk about it and I'll show it and I'll perform a routine or two with them. But having seen the quality, like this is something that you just need to have in your pocket. You know, we talk yeah. about everyday carry. You put that in your speed world. <laughs> you put that, you put a shell in your in your wallet. You're good to go into any coin routine that you want to. Just borrow some 50Ps. You're good to go. I have to say that I'd want that. And that's why I often think that in my head. You know, I know I sell things, but I go, would I really want that? Is that is that worth even the trouble? I'd want an expanded 50p because they're big, shiny. They look great. They look great on a close-up mat. They're great for palming. And I think, even though I know they don't know there's a shell, layman, you can't imagine something with seven sides quite being a fake. In my yeah. head, anyway, I can. You know, I, I can't imagine anyone, layman, thinking, well, that must go in there, you know. It, it just doesn't, does it? It doesn't go in there. That's but great for coins across. Absolutely. I have a, a routine called Shell Shocked, which uses a deep shell, but I did have a go with this and it did work great. I was surprised that the, the coverage is really good. So really, really pleased with that. It's just called Expanded 50p. There's no point in calling it, you know, Genesis. And it's just an Expanded 50p, isn't it? I yeah. do like Genesis, though, the band. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean. It, that's yeah, what it yeah. is. It is what it is. Mm. I think 30 quid's really, really fair. There are a lot of work. And um, I think UK magicians truly are going to be really, really chuffed with it. I agree. It. I think they're going to fly off the shelf. I really do. And I'm going to bring things back into the uh, studio now. I'm going to do a couple of routines with the coins. We're going to look at the speed loader. We're going to talk about the speed loader. Before we go, before I go and end this whole thing and take it back to the studio, I don't want you to give away anything at all. However, a little birdie has told me that at some point in the not too distant future, there's going to be a new product by Mark Mason that's going to take the magic world by storm. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to ask you to elaborate at all, but I'm telling you, this is going to be the best. I, I know what it is, obviously. This is going to be the best selling product that JB has ever bought out. Will you have it in time for Blackpool? Yes. Is this Christmas? Be Blackpool. Oh, Christmas. It's Christmas. Going to. If it all goes according to plan, and it is at the moment, and everything works, it's going to be worldwide distribution, not just me. It's going to be uh, through Murphy's, and it, we are looking end of November-ish. Do you think you could release it? 
maybe next year because I want to I want to get the trick of the year in the bag. And if you bring that thing out before Christmas, there's absolutely no chance in hell that I'm going to be able to. I don't know if every trick of the year, but I am super chuffed. I, I mean, it, what, oh, it is. It's, it's terrific. I we were just talking yesterday to somebody about it, and I showed them it, and they went, "You got to be joking." When you're ready to talk about it, can I bring you back on the channel and we can have a bit of a chat and you can... Yeah, I saw the it. final... I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I saw the final version of the of the three sign cards across to an envelope yesterday, which you need this to do. Yeah. So, well, 10 red cards, well. 10 blue cards, they put them in, signed. The three sign cards leave this envelope and go to the envelope using this gimmick. And... It's quite a long sequence to learn. I don't mean difficult. It's 27 minutes or something. But I saw the final and I went, people are going to go, you've got to be joking that that's the method. It's, I think it's going to be a winner. Oh, mate, it is. It's the best. You've bought some incredible stuff out over the years. We've talked about it. Honestly, I think this is going to be like a legacy yeah. for you. This is going to be something that everyone... That, people are uh, you have a habit of bringing something out and then just like discarding it but i think this is you know like it's sold now let's move on to the next thing but i think you need to constantly be producing this because this this is going to be a utility item that everybody's going to want to get when they get into magic it's like okay mm -hmm. you need to get an invisible deck you need to get this you need to get a shell oh and you need to get this thing by mark mason this is what you need to get yeah it's 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 great and the design's great and i'm really pleased with it it's all prototypes it's actually in production it's in proper production it's just wow it's just getting the pieces you know together and you know all the thing there's a video to shoot and there's boxes to get and there's this to do and there's the artwork so it, it should come together i was going to save it for blackpool that was but i thought maybe you know it'd be nice to have a, a good christmas trick are you going to have a, if it's available, I heard that you're going to be at Magi Fest, your first convention in a, in a couple of years almost, yeah. uh, which is super exciting. So it won't be there. Won't be there. Okay. But no. you are, you are going to have the speed loader and some of the stuff that you've created. Yeah. A lot of the this stuff year, you've brought out over the last year, you've not shown to anyone at a convention. Well, I, I no one's even seen Alibi. No. <laughs> I haven't even, I've never demmed Alibi for anyone. Not one dem. And Killer and Melinda, you only did once at Blackpool. That's once, probably... and yeah. I think that is fantastic. Yeah, it is. I think it's absolutely a special magic trick, Killer in Manila. It is. It's great. Yeah, I absolutely love it. So, so I mean, obviously, I, it's like having some new stuff, anyway, isn't it? Absolutely. absolutely. All right, my friend. Mark, thank always you so great much to me. talk to you. Thank you so much for supporting my crap. Sorry, quality magic tricks. <laughs> always, always. You're one of the good guys in magic, Mark, and, and, and I really appreciate you coming back on the channel. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. Look after yourself, Craig. See Bye you for now, everyone. Care. Bye. See you soon. Bye. So first of all, thanks very much to Mark Mason for coming on the channel. I know he's a busy guy, really much appreciated. And uh, I'll say the same thing to you guys that I said to Mark. I'm going to be completely honest. Mark is a friend of mine. I've known him for many, many years, but he would only ever want me to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And that's what you're going to get from me. Uh, we're going to start off by looking at the Speed Loader Wallet. So the Speed Loader Wallet is the new wallet by uh, uh, Mark Mason. It has been marketed many, many years ago by Anthony Miller. And uh, it is, uh, as it says on the tin, it is a wallet that you can load very, very quickly. Now, Mark actually showed the gimmick on camera, so I can talk quite freely about this. Basically, it's a hip style wallet and the outside of it uh, folds down, which allows you to load very, very easily. Normally, a card to wallet does not have a, a, have much in the way of where you've actually got to load that wallet. So you have to be very exact. With the Speed Loader wallet, that is not the case whatsoever. That's one of the big advantages of it. It works really well in a casual situation in a trouser pocket or a jeans pocket. Because when you put it into a trouser or a jeans pocket, it just stays there open. And you can go in and out and bring it out within seconds. Uh, and it looks incredibly cool. Now, I'm going to do a, a performance of it right now so you can see exactly how fast this load is, and then we'll talk about the pros and the cons. Okay, guys, sorry I'm standing up for this. This is kind of a weird thing compared to how we normally film, but this re routine requires me standing up or wearing a jacket, which I haven't got at the moment. Uh, Sarah, name card. 
Uh, oh gosh, I don't know. Three of clubs. The three of clubs. Okay, I'm going to need to find that. Just give me one second. There he is. Uh, the three of clubs. Are you happy with that one? Yeah. Cool stuff. Uh, so I'm going to get you to, uh, I'm just going to put S P on there. Is that okay? Yeah. Excellent, which is obviously your name. Yeah. Now, the well, card initials, goes... Initials, yeah. Your initials. The card goes down into the middle of the deck, so it's about about halfway down. To, I, don't, I don't know exactly. Roughly about halfway down, okay. right? But I made a prediction, Sarah. Earlier on, I actually made a prediction in my pocket. I actually made a prediction. I've got it here. This is my wallet. My wallet has been in my pocket the entire time, right? Now, let me show you this. This, this is weird. Hopefully, this will uh, show up on camera. Can you see that there's a card sticking out can, from yeah. inside the wallet? And you're not going to believe this, but this card is actually the card <laughs> that you wrote your name on. It is. Oh, my God. Okay, so that's a, that's a performance of the Speed Loader wallet. As you can see, I really do love this wallet. Uh, let's talk about the cons, first of all. There are a couple of things that you need to consider. Now, the first thing is, and you can see this by looking at the wallet, it is not... Uh, one of those thin wallets, the Nexus wallet, the Jameson wallet, the Shadow wallet. They're all examples of a very modern style looking thin wallet that would not look out of place um, in, 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 in anywhere. This is not one of those wallets. It's not like a, a really old, ancient, sort of really old school JOL style wallet. It's, uh, it's a hip wallet. It looks relatively uh, up to date. But it's just not as as kind of modern or sleek looking as the Nexus or or the Jameson or the Shadow. That's something that you need to bear in mind. Um, however, one of the big advantages is you can put your own stuff into this. And I know this is a big issue for a lot of people. Can you carry your own stuff into it? This makes an excellent wallet for an everyday carry wallet. You can put a ton of money in there. Uh, you can put loads of credit cards in there. I fitted mine out with gossip and a couple of other bits and pieces as well. Uh, will to read, die will be done, a few other bits and pieces. And it fits absolutely fine in there. There's lots of compartments, there's lots of areas. So it you can use it as your everyday wallet and you can have access to the gimmick whenever you want it. Uh, another thing to consider, I don't know if it's necessarily a con, but it's something you guys should consider, is that when the card goes into the wallet and you open up the wallet, it's not all the way, it's not like in a zippered compartment. A lot of wallets these days, uh, like the Nexus wallet and the Jameson wallet, when they have a card to wallet function, it's inside this zippered compartment, which feels more impossible. The FPS wallet is another example. In this ID compartment is, well, with this, it's just in a pocket. And so you open it up and you can see part of a card sticking out from the inside pocket. And when you pull it out, it's their card. So it's something to consider. It's not in a zippered compartment, which I've spoken to a couple of magicians and for them, that was an issue. It's not an issue for me, to be perfectly honest, but it's something that's worth noting. It is something that's worth considering. Um, it's very well made. It's made out of leather. It'll last a very, very long time. I can only imagine. Obviously, I've not had it for a very long time, um, but it should last for a very long time. The download that comes with it, the only other negative I can think of is the download that comes with it. Um, it's not Mark Mason on the download. In fact, exactly the opposite. It's uh, it's Anthony Miller on the download. Nothing wrong with him at all. Um, but I do like Mark's teaching style. And I was a bit disappointed when there was no footage of Mark at all. I think it would have been nice to include some extra bonus handlings or ideas or, or just Mark giving you an overview of how it works. Just because he's such a great teacher and lecturer and it's kind of worth worth having them on there, but it's not. What you do have though, is you have a lot of content on the download. So uh, Anthony goes through a whole bunch of different stuff. First of all, how to use the wallet, uh, how, to, how to load it. You've got something on there called the ultra load, the ultra fast load. And, uh, and there's something else on there as well that achieves the same thing. And both of these, the ultra fast load is a way of actually setting up the wallet so that you can um, have it open and hanging over your jacket pocket which makes the load a lot quicker because you guys know that as well as me, when you have a wallet of this size and you put it into a jacket pocket and a lot of pros do like having the jacket, uh, do like having it in the inside jacket pocket. If it goes all the way down and you've got deep pockets, it's very hard to load that card, even with a speed loader wallet. Um, well, with the ultra wallet set up, that's not the issue because it's right there. You go straight in and you bring it out. So it's a nice addition because it allows you to load a lot quicker. They have got another idea as well that ele elevates the wallet up to jacket pocket level. So again, both of these ideas are used in lieu of a slide. You don't need a slide 
with this because there's a couple of ideas up there on there that will allow you to load immediately into the wallet if that makes sense um then you've got the thing that mark talked about which is having the elastic bands wrapped around the the wallet and how that looks is when you bring the wallet out your pocket you've got elastic bands wrapped all the way around it i don't like that and i'll tell you why i don't like it yes probably it feels more magical because or doesn't feel more magical it feels more impossible because there's there's uh, elastic bands wrapped around the wallet but i think that's very ma magician -y thinking i think it's very magic for magicians -y thinking and the reason is the whole point of card to wallet is the card is going into an impossible location everybody knows what a wallet looks like the wallet the card shouldn't go in there having an elastic band wrapped around the wallet Nobody wraps an elastic band around a wallet. It's a very weird thing to do. It suddenly takes something that looks like a very organic, natural product and draws attention to it and screams there is a gimmick here by trying to disprove that there's a gimmick there, if that kind of makes sense. So I don't like, yes, you can wrap elastic bands around the wallet and still be able to load it very, very easily. But just because you can doesn't mean that you should, in my opinion um however what's also on there is a really nice peak now to be clear and when mark talked about the, uh talked about the peak initially because when i did the interview with mark i hadn't seen the wallet um when when mark talked about the peak i assumed you could peek some information off a business card not really not unless you put the information right at the very bottom of the business card when it's held vertically what the peak allows you to do is open up the wallet put the card inside the wallet close the wallet and in the action of just turning it around and giving it to someone's hold, you get a peek of what the card is inside the wallet. Now, you don't get any routines for this. You don't get any routining ideas, but they give you the concept. And it is a very nice concept. It's a very nice load. I wish they'd come up with a way of using it because it's kind of a weird thing. Pick a card, we're going to put it in that wallet. You pick the seven of diamonds. You know, why are we putting it in the wallet? What's the justification behind that? How are we going to, you know, so you're going to have to come up with your own routine for that. But the peak does look very nice. The other thing that you can do with this wallet, which is really good, that you can't do with any of the other wallets. You can't do this with the Jameson wallet. You can't do this with the Nexus wallet. You can't do this with any, you can't do this with an FPS is it allows you to steal the card very, very easily. So you can put a card inside the wallet. And the reason is you've got two compartments. You've got a secret compartment where the load chamber is. So you can put the card inside the wallet, close it up, and in the action of giving the wallet to them, uh, you can steal it out into cop. Uh, which is great because obviously you can do a million things with that. Now, they don't give you any routines with what you can do with that. The, the tutorial is very much a case of these are the moves, these are the techniques, come up with your own tricks, which I was a bit disappointed with, like I said, but, you know, by the by, it was well explained, the stuff that's on there. Um, but you can steal a card out the wallet very, very easily. And likewise, using very similar techniques, you can actually load a card into the wallet that's in full view the whole time. So you can give somebody a wallet, get them to hold it into their hand, have the card in cop, and as you come back, you can load that card directly into the wallet without needing to go into the pocket. It's a little bit angly, the, the technique to do that, but it is absolutely possible, so that's worth knowing as well. Um, yeah, and that's everything that you need to know. That's all the pros and the cons. I suppose the question is, what's better? Well, I suppose it depends on what you're looking for. If you are looking for a wallet that's all singing, all dancing, does, all, does a million different things and has a huge download with lots of different tricks and routines and ideas, then it's the Nexus you want to go for. If you're looking for a wallet as a mentalist that's got a kick-ass thought-off card in wallet built into it, it's got a really nice peak built into it uh, of a business card or any other information, uh, and, and you want a nice, sleek-looking wallet, then the Shadow Wallet's the one to go for. If you want a modern-looking card to wallet uh, that handles really, really nicely, get the Jameson Wallet. Uh, it, the, probably the one that you compare this to the most would be the FPS Wallet really, because the FPS wallet and the speed loader wallet have certain similarities, both in terms of the look and in terms of what they do. Um, what I would say is the speed loader wallet, for sure, it's a great name for that for that prop because it does load very, very quickly. For those people that struggle loading a normal card to wallet, or for those people that have an issue loading a card to wallet like this or have an issue loading it speedily this is absolutely the fastest way i've ever seen to load a wallet if you don't have an issue loading a wallet 
then maybe this might not be the one for you. You need to look at the pros and cons. I'm going to give this a good review because it's a really good wallet and it's it's a great everyday carry wallet because it's the sort of thing that you can carry around with you and you can keep your own stuff in and you're ready to do a card to wallet at the moment's notice. So I'm going to give it 98%. I think it's really good. But I think all the other wallets I've mentioned are really good as well. So I think what you need to do is decide what you want out of a wallet. If you want a kick-ass card to wallet that loads very, very easily, that has other stuff as well that you can build, that you can do with it, um, to do with playing cards, like stealing a card and peeking a card, then this is probably the one you're going to go for. It's going to last you a lifetime, and it's very well made. Uh, just decide on what you want the wallet to do. And, uh, you know, if, if this wallet is covers all the bases then go for it. So as Mark went through on the interview, the next thing we're going to be looking at is the 50p shell that he has created. And when he showed me this over Zoom, that was Facebook Messenger. He messaged me on Facebook saying, yo, Craig, um, turn on your video. I want to show you something. When he showed me this on Facebook Messenger, I was blown away, like absolutely blown away. I did not think it would ever be possible for somebody to come up with a 50p shell. I'm so excited he has. I'm going to carry this around with me all of the time. For people in the UK, this is a game changer. Now, let me tell you why it's a game changer. First of all, when I'm gigging a lot of the time, I use silver dollars, I use half dollars, and I've got shells for those coins, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, I know a lot of people like to use British coins that live in England. You know, it's kind of like, why am I bringing out an American coin to do a trick with? And that's fair enough. I like using English coins when I'm actually out and about and I'm not being paid to perform because it looks more natural. Um... And I don't like using shells when, when I'm using British coins. And the reason is 10 pences are just too small. I can't get on with 10 pences unless I've got a specific routine that I need a 10 pence for. I don't like using 10 pences or two pences. Uh, also, two pound coins. I don't have a problem using two pound coins. But generally, as a rule, um, uh, you can't borrow four two pound coins. You just can't. It's very difficult to borrow for two pound coins. People just don't carry two pound coins around with them. Uh, so if I want to do a routine where I'm borrowing two pound coins, um, a lot of the time I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm not going to be able to find four coins. I'll get 10 pences or, or, or whatever it may be. Easy to get 50 pences. Lots of people have 50 pences. So I can borrow 50 pences very, very easily. So I can have this shell in my pocket or I can have it in my wallet and I can just get it into palm at a moment's notice. And now I can borrow some 50p's, two, three, four, 50p's, depending on the routine I want to go into, load the shell and I'm good to go. And the shell looks amazing. The coverage of the shell, like Mark showed you on the interview, is great. Um, the way that it sits over it is great. It locks immediately. It doesn't lock, but it, it kind of sits where it needs to be immediately. It's, it's just brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. 50p is my favorite British coins to use. This shell is the perfect shell for 50 pences. Can't believe he's done it. Really glad that he has. If you are a UK magician, I think you need to get one of these and have it in your wallet. And there's so much you can do with it. I'm going to quickly just show you a quick routine with a shell so you can see the sort of thing that you can do with this. Let me show you a quick routine with it right now. So, Sarah, you're going to help me out with this. And first of all, have a look at those 450 pences. Make sure they're okay. Uh, they should be okay because they're the ones that I asked you to lend me from your purse because I didn't have any 50 pences, so they're actually your coins. No, that's great, yeah. They are, are they okay? Yeah. Very good. So we have four coins all together. Um, I'm going to show you something with these four coins. I'm going to show you something okay. pretty weird. Now, there is a classic routine in magic, and it's called the coins across. And the idea is very simple. The idea is to make the coins jump across. The, the clue is in the name of the trick. Now, what I want you to understand is if I put the four coins over here on my right, your left, they're going to jump from this side of the table to this side of the table, from this hand to this hand. This hand will remain closed, but they're going to jump across. And at no right. point will I physically move them across. So it looks like this. You have the four coins over here. You make a fist. This mm -hmm. hand's in a fist as well. When you squeeze, the first coin jumps across. That's the first one over there from over there. That leaves us yeah. with three coins, which is pretty good. Now, you didn't know what was going to happen. So let me do that again for you. So look, let me just lay it out so you understand. Now, remember, this coin is not going to go anywhere near these three coins. It stays over here. These three stay here. The coins never physically move across. And yet when I squeeze... That's what happens. Now we have two coins here. Yeah, we have two, two coins over here. So two coins have gone, two coins remain. These are the two coins left to go. These are the two coins that have already gone. Watch, two and two. I can't be fairer than that. And yet just like that, that's one over there, 
three over mm -hmm. there, the third one goes across. Cool. The last one's the hardest one, the lot, because you know what, you know where, you know when. Remember, this hand stays here, this hand stays here. You give a little squeeze and that's all four coins jumped across. And like I said, my hands never went across. But here's the thing. When I do this, people turn around to me and they say, Craig, because that's my name, Craig, they say, Craig, pretty impressive. But here's the problem. I was picking the coins up. I was holding them in my hand. And when you're holding the coins in your hand, anything could happen. Mm -hmm. So I'll do it again. But this time, I'm not going to hold the coins in my hand. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to literally leave them on the table. And I'm just going to wave my hands over. I'm going to cast a shadow, if you will. Yeah. And when I cast a shadow here, the first coin jumps across. It jumps from here to here to here. That's kind of long distance. If I want that one to go, I kind of do it like that. And the final one mm -hmm. goes just like this. And that's one, two, three, four, four coins two hands and I think that's a bit of a miracle. So there you go that's a routine with the shell that'll give you an idea of the sort of thing you can do with this you can do that immediately that was uh, you know there's so many different things with the shell look at some of David Roth's work some of Jeff Latter's work some of Michael Rubenstein's work uh, Troy Huser has an awful lot with the shell um, I've got quite a lot of stuff on the shell look on Netflix there's hundreds um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's getting hundred percent from me. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I'm going to have this with me all the time as my impromptu carry around. Next time I do an EDC and everyday carry video, I'm going to include this on there, uh, because having a shell with you and you borrow coins, it opens up so many possibilities. So yeah, it's absolutely great. And if you don't live in the UK, maybe you want to get it and you want to get some 50 pences to create intrigue. I mean, that's why I use silver dollars and half dollars. I'd bring them out and I'd show people and people are instantly intrigued with them. Oh, what's this? Uh, really, is this what I have in America? Yes, I've never been to America. I didn't know that's a very big, heavy coin. And maybe you'd do the same thing. Oh, look, that's a bit of a weird coin. Look, it's hexagonal in shape. Isn't that weird? Uh, I don't know. So maybe it'll work for people over in uh, different countries, but in people in the UK, this is worth its weight in gold. Absolute killer, 100%. So there you go, guys. That is another review show special in the bag. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, you can go check out uh, Mark Mason uh, down here if you want to go see his stuff. He is absolutely incredible. Um, go buy everything that Mark does and go check him out at a dealer stand. And then you will absolutely buy everything that Mark does. Uh, don't forget, if you want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. These review show specials go out every Sunday evening. If you want me to, uh, if you want to tell me which product or which dealer or which company you want me to take a deep dive on, I will absolutely do that for you. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to be back again tomorrow on Monday with three videos. There's going to be a short at two o'clock. At six o'clock, we're going to have a live. And at nine o'clock, we're going to be back with a five by five. So I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.